When I was diagnosed, I was very angry. I couldn't understand why I had cancer. I felt that I took very good care of myself. I exercised, I watched what I ate all the time, and I felt that someone my age probably shouldn't be developing cancer. When you get your breast cancer, most people are just worried, oh, I'm not gonna live, I'm dying. And in doing the reconstruction, what you're looking at is thinking about the future. I mean, you wouldn't be thinking about reconstruction if you weren't thinking about living. PRMA specializes in breast reconstruction. Uh, that's 90% of our practice. It's what we do every day. It's what all of us do every day. It's what we've been trained to do. It's our passion. Our goal uh, is to restore wholeness to patients who have cancer. Taking care of women who have breast cancer is the focus of what we do. The breast cancer has an impact on a woman's life and, and really all the people around her. What sets PRMA apart from other physicians providing breast reconstruction services is the team approach to breast cancer care. PRMA started approximately 18 years ago with two physicians. It has now grown to six uh, plastic surgeons. It's one of the, the leaders in reconstructive surgery. Our practice f focuses solely on breast reconstruction, primarily with living tissue. All the PRMA surgeons are board certified plastic surgeons with extensive training, not just in plastic surgery, but also in microsurgery. At our first meeting, we spend quite a while with the patients, reassuring them that this is not the end of the world, that they will get through this. And because of our experience, we can say that we've treated thousands of patients with breast cancer. Taking care of women with breast cancer is, is most important to us. At PRMA, we provide a full spectrum of options for breast reconstruction. We put a high priority on using the patient's own tissue to provide for the reconstruction because then at the end of the reconstructive process the patient has their own living tissue which is permanent, healthy, warm, natural tissue. There's no substitute for this. If you can use something that's permanent and will last the patient's lifetime, it will save them procedures and give them a better result. It'll be soft and warm, and again, it will change weight with them. If they get gain weight, it gets larger, and so it becomes, it's part of their body. Uh, and a lot of patients after six months will say, it feels like my breast, where implant patients never say that. Certainly the implant-based reconstruction is a much technically uh, straightforward procedure uh, at the time of reconstruction, however, there are associated problems or potential complications with an implant-based type of reconstruction. It was very hard for me to come to grips at first that I did have cancer. I was angry, I was sad, I was depressed. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I almost didn't even want to talk to my family. I secluded myself in a sense because I, I just didn't want to deal with it because I couldn't understand it. It was very hard to move on. I was only 30 when I was diagnosed. So at that point, I did not expect to enter my 30s <laughs> with cancer. PRMA was one of the best facilities to go for plastic surgery. So I just did some research on the internet and I kind of Googled you know, PRMA, I didn't know what they were. I found very good information on them. I was very comfortable with PRMA because I saw that the majority of their plastic surgery was breast reconstruction. So that made me feel that I was going in with people who were skilled, who were constantly on the edge of technology. You're, you're waking up with a flat stomach, you're waking up with your breasts again. With the instructions that the, the nurses at PRMA gave me, they helped me get better quicker than I even expected myself. I was very blessed, I believe, to have gone with PRMA because they gave me back the confidence that I felt I wasn't gonna have. The practice philosophy that we have here at PRMA is to use the patient's own tissue wherever possible. And within that philosophy, there is a range or a spectrum of options available. All the physicians at PRMA are immensely qualified to do the procedures. We all work together in a group setting 
most of these procedures take two surgeons to be working together to adequately perform the procedure and to do it in a short enough period of time that it makes it safe for the patient. So we all are equally qualified in that respect. Deep flap stands for deep inferior epigastric perforator flap and it's actually the preferred method of breast reconstruction at PRMA. It uses the skin and fat from the lower tummy region, kind of like a tummy tuck, uh, to reconstruct a warm, natural, soft breast. Uh, the skin and the fat from the lower tummy is basically disconnected from the body and transplanted up to the chest and reconnected using microsurgery. The main benefit is that all the abdominal uh, muscles are preserved. Unlike the traditional techniques uh, such as the tram flap, uh, the abdominal muscles are completely left behind and only skin and fat is moved. The recovery is also much, much easier when you save the muscle. Uh, patients have less pain and they stay in hospital for less time, generally speaking. The deep flap is a very successful procedure. It's 99% uh, or more uh, successful. One of the most exciting um, uh, innovative things that we are doing at PRMA is, is harvesting the abdominal tissue with some sensory nerves attached to the tissue itself. When it comes time for the reconstruction, not only the blood vessels are reconnected in the chest, but also the sensory nerves are being reconnected in the chest uh, as well. Now, it's not going to be identical to the way it was prior to surgery, but some sensation is, re is, is regained. Once the procedure is done and completed and the reconstruction uh, is completed, um, most women are, are exceptionally happy. They don't have the typical results uh, that are associated with a breast implant reconstruction and the problems that go with the implants. The cosmetic results um, are far superior if we can do the reconstruction at the same time as the mastectomy. Most patients also love the fact that they get a tummy tuck uh, out of the procedure too. Um, the vast majority of women that go through this have had children, uh, they've got some extra tissue in that region, and they're very happy to get the benefits of the body contouring aspect uh, from the reconstruction too. Nationwide, there are probably only about 40 plastic surgeons that perform deep flap breast reconstruction routinely. <laughs> All our surgeons are, uh, have extensive experience with microsurgery and in terms of our cumulative experience the practice has uh, probably over a hundred years of experience uh, in terms of uh, advanced plastic surgery uh, procedures, microsurgical reconstruction. At PRMA we perform hundreds of deep flap breast reconstructions every year. In fact, this year we're on track to perform over 500. The deep flap procedure, in most cases, what's recommended because the blood vessel is the largest. It comes off of the uh, iliac vessels in the groin and is traced through the rectus muscle, the sit-up muscle, to the fat of the umbilical area on the abdomen. The difference between the deep flap and the SIA flap is primarily just where the blood vessel originates. The SIEA flap is based upon the superficial inferior epigastric artery, which runs directly underneath the skin down to the groin area, does not go through the rectus muscle. Therefore, if we find a very large SIEA, we can use that as our inflow vessel to the flap without dissecting the rectus muscle. So when we set out discussing the SIEA flap with the patient, that's usually not the primary flap that we're going to recommend because we don't know that that blood vessel is available or large enough. However, if we do find it and it is large enough to connect to the blood vessels in the chest, then we'll use that preferentially and it'll save the patient some recovery postoperatively, maybe one or two days fewer in the hospital if it's usable. The gap flap, again, is the gluteal artery perforator flap, and that would be taking a block of tissue in an elliptical form about 10 by 20 centimeters from the top part of the buttocks region for the superior gluteal flap. And that leaves, that tissue can be then transferred to the front of the body in the vessels attached to the internal mammary vessels. 
uh, and that tissue will have its own blood supply and we can shape it to look like a breast. Now some patients that area is very firm and that fat is not good for shaping and sometimes will go down to the inferior gluteal which is the lower part of the buttocks region. In some patients that area is softer and uh, there's more excess skin there and we'll take that block of tissue from there and use that. The positives are it's a, it's a good donor site, um, the scars are hidden, enclosed, um, it does not leave as large a defect as you would expect, the buttock area tends to round out. Um, the downside is the artery is very small and it's technically more difficult. Sometimes the perforators are not as consistent as in the deep flap, uh, but the artery, the size of the artery is probably a limiting factor with that flap. The contour benefit of using that flap um, is that there is a, a secondary uh, buttock lift uh, appearance. Most commonly we use the tissue from the lower abdominal wall area and this is the DIEP flap. However, there are instances where, for any number of reasons, that option may not be possible. When that situation arises, we look for other tissue options that will provide for healthy living tissue from the patient herself. One of those options is the so-called TUG flap or T-U-G flap and that stands for the transverse upper gracilis flap. And what that means is we're going to take skin and fatty tissue from the upper inner thigh and we're going to treat it just like we do the lower abdominal tissue from the DIEP flap. It's the same basic procedure. It's a transplant. So we're going to move that tissue from the upper inner thigh up to the chest area and we're going to craft that tissue into a reconstructed breast just as we do with the DIEP flap or any of the other tissue options that may be presented to you. The success rate with the tug flap, as with all of the other tissue reconstructions that we do, is very, very high. The success rate is over 99%. Uh, usually uh, a muscle called the gracilis muscle is also taken with that flap. Now the functional detriments of taking that muscle are negligible. Women do not notice that muscle being removed with that flap. Because of the tissue that's taken from the inner part of the thigh, the secondary benefit is also a thigh lift uh, with the procedure. One of the other reconstructive surgeries that we perform is a latissimus dorsi flap. Uh, we call it the lat flap. The latissimus muscle is a big fan-shaped muscle on your back. Uh, it courses from your lower back up to uh, your armpit area. With that, we can transfer the muscle as well as skin and fat and use that tissue to reconstruct your breast. In terms of the advantages of doing that, um, the flap is very robust. We can use that method of reconstruction in patients that uh, maybe have medical problems that make them not suitable for some of the other flap surgeries. One of the other methods of reconstruction that we perform is tissue expander and implant reconstructions. The procedure is, is similar in that it's a multi-step procedure. Uh, the first step involves placing a tissue expander, which is a specially designed implant, under the chest muscle. The tissue expander is designed so that we can poke it with a needle during an office visit and inject fluid into the expander to enlarge it. This lets the tissue gradually accommodate the increased size kind of like a, a woman's abdomen can gradually expand during pregnancy. Normally I begin injecting saline into the expander at about three weeks after surgery. And we do that weekly until the breast size is what we want. Normally it's three months after the first surgery it is the second step. And that involves removing the tissue expander and placing the permanent implant. One of the disadvantages of implant reconstructions is they tend to feel and look different from an, your natural breast. The other 
big disadvantage of the implants are that they're implants. They're man-made devices. They're not part of you. And being manufactured devices, they don't last forever. Uh, the implants have about a 1% per year risk for rupture or de deflation, which means in a patient that's young and healthy and uh, has a long lifetime, uh, she needs to look at having the implant replaced probably at least once in, in her lifetime. I first heard about PRMA through um, a woman in my support group. She had had the reconstruction. She invited me to her house and my husband and the kids, we went to her house and you know, she went through what she went through at the time and, um, and my husband and her husband talked and then she showed me her reconstructed and she did one and the other one was original and I could not tell the difference between the two when she took her bra off. You know, at the beginning I really wasn't sure I wanted to do reconstruction um, so I found out a bit about it. In fact, originally I went in there with my husband, we thought we'll just do implants because um, that's the least invasive procedure. Um, and I chose not to eventually because um, implants don't last forever and I like the idea of the, the reconstruction, reconstructed breast being part of you and growing with you or, you know, so if you put on weight, your breasts put on weight, you know, and it's, it's a much more natural thing. I was informed very well with PRMA, but, um, and the, one of the reasons I'm doing this video is I think a lot of people um, are not informed about their options, so people will go see a surgeon or the oncologist or whoever they see first, and they'll go get a mastectomy, and they won't find out later on, until later on, that they can have a reconstruction or that they could have had reconstruction at the same time as the mastectomy. And I think that you get a better cosmetic result, but probably you also get a better psychological result because when you wake up, you haven't really, well, you have lost your breast tissue, but the breast form is still there. I, I'm very happy with my result. Um, I can wear a um, swimsuit. I, um, I don't have any um, limitations. I mean, if I choose to, I could run a marathon. I can do sit-ups and, and all that sort of stuff. I go swimming and, you know, you can resume your normal activity. I think one thing that a lot of women would um, appreciate about reconstructive surgery that's done at the same time as the mastectomy is um, even though you know you've gone through the surgery and um, you have lost your breast, when you wake up after the surgery, you actually wake up in a bra with a breast form that's, you know, the reconstructed breast. And so you don't really feel like you've had a mastectomy. And I think psychologically that's a real plus for many women. And then, you know, after you've recovered, a lot of women have said that, you know, they can almost like forget that they've had breast cancer and go on with their life. To do this well, you need to do it often, and you need to have a team. So we have a team at the hospital in the operating room with specialized equipment, microscope, and micro instruments. The OR staff know exactly what we're doing every day, uh, so that helps decrease the operating time. And then we have a special wing at the hospital for breast reconstruction patients alone. And these nurses are well trained on how to monitor the flaps, how to take care of these patients. They're very encouraging. And the patients find it to be a very satisfying procedure. PRMA is developing a national reputation for breast reconstruction. Our national reputation is growing uh, every year. People from all over the country are now coming to San Antonio to have their reconstructions done here uh, due to the proficiency that we've been able to obtain uh, over the years. Doing the reconstruction, getting a woman back to feeling better and, and normal, uh, I think helps to really fight the cancer and, and beat it. I think one of the advantages we have at PRMA is that our entire staff is sensitive to the needs of breast cancer patients 
from the very beginning of their diagnosis to the very end of their treatment and then their ongoing follow-up. To be able to use that, uh, use our skills to, to do that is, is, is quite a, um, a privilege. From your very first visit until your very last, our nurses, our administrative staff, and our physicians will dedicate all of our energy to your care. I'm blessed to be here. And there are many other women who came and went before us who didn't have the choices that we had. And we've got wonderful doctors, we've got wonderful technology, that cancer is not a death sentence anymore. You can't have cancer and you can't live. Use this as an opportunity to, to take charge of your life.